This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 60, Packing Up and Shipping Out. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest video podcast. I'm John Miller. Uh, getting down to the second to last episode. Uh, this is the episode where we pack up and ship out, as the title says. And I'm very glad to welcome back to the show Ben Clark out in Telluride. How you doing, Ben? Awesome, John. What's happening? <laughs> Uh, I got a little bit of a frog in my throat today, so I hope it doesn't bother anyone. But uh, yeah, we're getting down there and uh, getting done with the 2003 expedition. It's been quite a ride so far. I want to remind everyone that there is a lot more content coming down. The rest of Everest is not coming to an end. And uh, please, you know, if you have the time, shoot me an email. Let me know how you've liked the show. Let me know what you've liked about the show. And if you have any adventures of your own, you know, share them with me. I'd love to hear... What you, what you guys have been doing, I know that uh, lots of you have been watching because you like camping and backpacking and climbing. So, you know, share some of those experiences with me. I'd love to hear them. It's, it's a two-way street. But before I get too much further than that, let's uh, get back up to base camp and let's uh, rejoin the expedition as it comes to an end and uh, as we pack up. So here we go. All right, so what we're looking at here is the last sunrise on Everest and... I thought, oh, I'll get this really great shot of the sun coming up. Well, as it turns out, the sunrise in Everest, not very dramatic. Not a whole lot happens. It's pretty slow. <laughs> it's for patient people only. <laughs> and I think, I think, I edited this a while back. I think this is actually sped up. <laughs> so they're just, I bet. There's not a whole, no, I guess it's not sped up. That's me. Or maybe I had it sped up and then I slowed it down here. But not a whole lot happens for sunrise. No. That's the north face. Yeah. Stays in the shade all day. So here's the the last of our little camp, and there's Dawa with an expedition barrel. I think we had, I haven't had a, oh, go that? ahead. Go ahead. I was just thinking I haven't had an expedition with this much stuff in so long. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it like oh man, we had so much stuff in for that trip. We there so long. What I do is you, you'll see, you'll see me speed this up so that there's a lot of footage here, and I wanted to compress it down so you can see exactly just how much effort it took just to leave the place. I think we had Actually, started. No, that's just how. Yeah. <laughs> how easy it is to move after you're acclimatized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we were pretty we were pretty excited to get going. Everyone was happy to leave. I had a really difficult time sleeping that night because I was just so excited about the potential for getting back home and, and seeing my wife Heidi again. It had been a long yeah. time since I had spent time with her, and I just I tossed and turned all night. I was so excited at the prospect of, of leaving. Mm-hmm. I was just excited about going to Jean move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my, one of my favorite towns. Yeah. The armpit of Tibet. <laughs> you know, when we were in Yelam, we found out that uh, that Zhang Mu in Yelam was actually Tibetan for the gateway to hell. And they thought reversing that canyon, heading back out of the high country down into all the trees and the clouds and everything toward Zhang Mu was actually the end of the earth. Really? Uh huh. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. <laughs> For those of you who forget all. who forget what we're talking about, we're talking about that uh, crazy, crazy canyon that I uh, remember we did that point of view shot on top of the uh, on top of the Land Cruiser, where you could uh, see what the road looked like. It's just this twisty, turny road, and and you might want to revisit one of that, those old episodes. I don't know the number, but um, and Zhang Wu was. Uh, not definitely not our favorite place, not our favorite town. Lots of uh, very communist architecture. Yeah. Probably, probably the, the mustiest smelling city on earth. One of. There's some other pockets of aroma throughout <laughs> China. You'll, you'll notice here that the sun still hasn't come up. We were getting trying to get an early start, and most of the not quite nine. <laughs> <laughs> most of the most of the other expeditions that we were friends with 
were leaving this same morning as well. I know the Royal Navy Royal Marines camp was was leaving this same morning. <laughs> there we go. I'll speed up a little bit. <laughs> there's there's Lakpa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right there Finally. in the back. Yep. So this is some of the only footage we have of that guy as I've commented before. Yep. And then that guy in the yellow hat, I think, I don't really know what he was doing. Maybe he was being paid to help us pack. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he's being paid to stand around with his hands in his pockets. Looks like, looks like he did a whole lot of... He must, I don't know, maybe he works for the Chinese government. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was, I think... These are all the... Yeah, that right there. So that bag right there, that's the entire film. That's all of the tapes that I filmed. Yeah. So that basically, that's the podcast. That everything you guys have seen right in that bag. And I was afraid that it might get confiscated. So I stuffed it in uh, one of these expedition barrels and covered it in some other gear so that it would be hidden. Because, again, you know, the Chinese uh, authorities aren't too happy about people filming in Tibet. And I had you know, 80 some odd hours of material. So I wanted to keep it hidden. Do you remember when we flew back through uh, the airport in LA and Christy Yamaguchi, the figure skater was <laughs> next to us? Yep, and uh, <laughs> Elvis uh, uh, Stryko. Yeah, we got, actually, I think, uh -huh. it was, I, I think it was San Francisco. We came yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. And they, they were like, looking through the bag and go, well you got all these tapes and you have a camera I was like yeah it's kind of like peanut butter and jelly huh <laughs> they were so confused we had so much it's like well you know we didn't want to leave this in the, in the bags no, but what Ben's talking about is that we got uh, we were in line for uh, security in uh, Tokyo and flying to flying to San Francisco, and we happened to get on the same plane as all of these famous figure skaters. They were on tour, and mm -hmm. uh, little did they know that they were with uh, some very famous podcasters. <laughs> little did we know. <laughs> I'm well, still a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Just you know, we've we've used so much stuff, and yet how much material we still had left over. I guess it's it's better than having you know not having enough stuff. Yeah, we definitely came prepared. It's funny that you know, for myself, having returned to this base camp in April of 2007. All of those rings around the tents, all those rocks that were piled up, they're still there. Nice. Good camp. Yeah, it was a really good camp. Hey, there's that guy working. Nice. Oh, no, now he's tying his shoe. Okay. <laughs> those are really, really comfortable tents. They're quite luxurious. They were three-person tents, and it was only one person to every tent. So we had a lot of room. Hey, there's my rug in the bottom of the screen. Awesome. That rug's sitting on the floor right behind me in my office here. Nice. It's all this work, and, you know, it really it really is strange, because we had really called this home. At least for me, you had been up higher most, uh, probably at least 50-50 of the time. Yeah. And uh, but 30 days above 20,000 feet or yeah, 21,000 feet. Yeah, so more than more than uh, half the expedition you were up at ABC, but this uh -huh. this was truly my home away from home, and you know, s seeing it packed up now <laughs> here in 2007, you know, makes me very nostalgic. But like I said, I was ready to get out of there and go home. We, you know, mission accomplished. Yeah. You had summited. You were safe. Everyone was everyone was healthy, and uh, or relatively healthy. And so it was it was definitely time to get going and I know Dawa was looking forward to getting back uh to Kathmandu. Lakwa was getting back so he could do some uh play some pool. Sure. Yeah, oh. a little snooker and some boozing. <laughs> <laughs> uh Boko Lama was looking forward to seeing his children again. Um Dawa Chiri was looking forward to getting back with his family. Lawong was probably looking forward to uh 
getting on with the next expedition that he was going to be doing because that guy is only happy when he's climbing. Yeah. He's climbing a lot. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's my rug right there. Maybe there. I had two of them, but I only got one back to the States. The other one disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love how we lost a whole bunch of gift cards and we got all this really nice uh, handmade paper this year in Nepal and, and we never really made I never really made it back. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know where that is. There's Pasong. Uh, mm hmm Yeah, I saw Pasong in in uh Nyalong when I ran into Lawong and it's my old buddies and I was on the way to Shishpang in the spring. Yeah, it's cool. We laughed about hanging out with the Frenchman Law. <laughs> he would always say, oh, yes, I do not know if we could climb the uh, materials uh, on the mountain. I think they blow away and the materials are gone. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and I looked immediately at the song and said, do you have your materials? <laughs> Just lost it. Just lost it. He's like, come on. <laughs> I was like, yep. Was so, he, he's a funny dude. Was he going to be working with uh, La Wong on Choi Yu? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. They, uh, he was cooking for him. Good. Yep, unfortunately, when I arrived this spring, everyone was already uh, on their way to the mountains, and I was uh, really hoping to, to catch up with Dawa, because he was my man, and I really wanted to I wanted to give him a big hug <laughs> and thank him again for everything he did for me, but he was already in the south side of Everest, and I was heading up to the north. Yep. Yeah, I like Dawa. And, and again, you know, here, you, you're watching these guys work. We were not allowed to take apart our own tents. Yeah. We could barely we could barely pack our own clothing. They kind of tried to do everything for us. Which, you know, at this point was kind of what we had to just had to do. Uh, here's Andre. Andre I think was pretty had pretty much lost his mind at this point and he was only eating cake and drinking beer. <laughs> And he wanted he wanted to show it show me to uh, show the camera how much he enjoyed his morning cake, so I said I'd film him. But uh, that was that was I think he really had Sorry. had a terrible terrible stroke. Yeah. But he recovered fully as far as I as far as I know once he got back to Belgium. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But he had uh, his memory of the expedition was that he had summited yeah which wasn't quite the case no i don't but, think he made it above the north pole but uh altitude like you know his hands. yeah altitude can really cause a lot of danger you saw what happened to major uh -huh. time to take down the dome sweet dome like mr fuller and the Jesus Dome. <laughs> Look how many people it takes. Like six people working on that thing. Yeah, that thing's huge. Mm -hmm. You own one of those, don't you? I do. Nice. I'm the proud owner of a tent that I can no longer fill because my expeditions are so small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just two of you. <laughs> Usually, two or yeah. three. <laughs> but a tent weighs 60 pounds. If anybody's in the market for a <laughs> really awesome geodesic dome tent that's been used for one awesome Cogwood trip, I got one. Yeah, send me an email. <laughs> yeah, send us an email. We're more than happy to um, help you out in your quest towards um, yeah, a permanent, not quite yurt, but permanent structure. And I'm sure that I can get Ben to personally autograph it, and that will reduce the value of it even further. Yeah, so I'm picking up like I'll, I'll even send you a picture of it being used. <laughs> so oh, what you're looking at here is just to the left of the screen, just on the left side of the screen, you see some blue. That's actually the truck. That's the truck that we are going to be loading up and uh, getting out of there. And, you know, I don't have any footage of the actual trip out. I have a few photographs you'll see in the next episode um, of the way out, but... You know, again, I had to hide all of my cameras, and, and at this point, I hid absolutely everything because I was kind of done filming, as you can imagine. I was kind of, I was kind of done. Just, I wanted to just enjoy the last few days. Yeah. Especially wanted to enjoy the road out because uh, I had spent so much of it, you know, trying to 
film on the way in and I really wanted to experience what everything looked like because I was not familiar with Tibet. I had lived there for nearly two months, but I lived in this small little area just at Everest. So I was looking forward to seeing what the rest of Tibet really did look like again. Here I am on the left. That's the first shot of me in this whole 14 minute deal. I think I was asleep <laughs> laying in my tent until <laughs> the last minute. You were, so and you were having digestive issues because your digestive system had started working again after several days, you know, about six or seven days of not working up on the higher reaches of the mountain. It had reawakened. Yeah. And I think you're, are you eating there? I can't quite tell oh, what you've know. got in your hand. I think you might be eating breakfast. Oh, you got a cup of tea. That's what it is. Nice. So, Love the tea. Yeah. this right here, everyone, that was the last shot of the expedition at Everest. <laughs> Everything you'll see in the next episode is on our way either back to Kathmandu or it's uh, in Kathmandu. And we were fortunate enough to be able to participate in the 50th anniversary celebration of Everest's first summit. And uh, we, we got to meet... Say that again, Ben? And it said by the skin of our teeth, and what it said. Yeah. Just limited. That was that was quite an quite an experience, and as you'll see in next next episode, which is the last episode from 2003, there was quite a bit of contrast between base camp and two days later being at the Hyatt in Kathmandu, which is probably more luxurious than the the royal palace. And uh, yeah, the Hyatt's cool. We ended up there for night last spring. It's, I mean, it's kind of like it loses its charm because it feels so western yeah like you really feel like you're in i don't know like I'm, i mean if i were to compare it to tell you right i feel like i'd be in like the cosmopolitan yeah. <laughs> the new share and like somewhere really you know really luxurious and nice it's not that expensive and the food there was fantastic but it didn't have the same charm as some of the places we had stayed right <clears throat> but uh in, in any case it was uh, a slightly bit of culture shock so we'll catch up with that next week and i actually believe ben will be in person in my studio next week i'm really looking forward to that you too, me too john i'm psyched to hang out with you yeah all right so everyone don't forget send me an email let me know what you like about the show let me know how it's been and also don't forget that i will be in ontario california last week of september uh 28th through the 30th at the podcast expo if you're going to be there I will be wearing a Rest of Ever sh shirt, and I will look like myself. So come up and say hi. Don't don't be don't be shy. I want to say hi to all, anyone who's going to be there. So um, really tall and good looking in person. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, I have a, a, a bit of a belly going uh, as opposed to being emaciated like I was here in <laughs> here in Everest in 2003. So in any case, you thanks. Got more charisma than Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Thanks so much for joining me, Ben, and uh, thanks for sticking in with, for the uh, the past 60 episodes, everyone. I really appreciate it. And we will catch up with you next week. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every week. If you enjoy watching and would like to show your support, then take a look at my website. Aside from having lots of additional blog entries from the expedition updated every week, there's this little donation button on every page. Now, many of you have pressed that button and your generous contributions are helping to cover my hosting fees. If you haven't donated but would like to, then just contribute any amount. In return, I'll give you access to the video and audio dispatches I sent out while we were actually at Everest. It's pretty interesting stuff. Contribute $25 or more, and I'll even throw in an iPod compatible version of the film Everest The Other Side. That's the project the entire podcast here is based on. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com. Everest.com.